Hi there everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Should You Pull and I'm actually going to include some Awakenings in this video as well, talking about the final Awakening batch that's just been released for Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now I wanted to wait until the batch had actually come out before I decided to make the video because we were unsure as to what the second EX to come alongside Lightning would be. And it turns out that it's Bart's EX's return along with a rework that's come early for Bart's. So does that make Bart's as viable as he could be? Does it make Lightning look better? Does it make the banners worth pulling on at all? If you want to find out then stay tuned and keep on watching. As always with these videos, don't forget to check out all of the social links in the description box below, including Twitch, Patreon, and all those other good stuff, and Discord as well, where we talk about Opera Omnia, share friend units, and all sorts of things. So before we go into the details of Lightning and Bars, we're going to go into the banners that hold them. So on Lightning's banner, we have access to Yang, Raijin, and Lila Set. So starting with some of those characters and seeing whether they're worth awakening if you already have their stuff, or if you don't have their stuff, whether it's worth pulling for them at all. So the first character that we're going to start with here is going to be Yang, and as always I'm using DissidiaDatabase.com or DissidiaDB.com and I very much encourage you guys to go and sort of sub support the channel, support the website and go to their website and just check out all the stuff they have to offer, it's a phenomenal site. But starting with Yang, he is one of the first characters to come out in the game and so therefore his initial commands don't really do a lot quite honestly, he's very very lacklustre. But and his gear doesn't add a huge amount to what he does, it helps. But you can see the kind of where they're going with it. They're just trying to make sure that the kick does more damage to all of the non-focused targets. He was one of the first kind of AOE damage dealers. And then looking at what he gets from his awakening. Again, this is the JP side, so you can ignore the level 68 and 70 part of this. But kick extend increases max kicks max uses by one. When using kick, it raises your bravery before you use it. It increases its number of hits, it raises its potency, and it raises its splash damage. So it's just literally kick plus so it, like I mean it, uses, it says it in the name really it just makes kick a little bit stronger and then focus extend focus was always just a very very plain move it buffed his stats a little bit it made it so his brave attack was essentially a brave plus and now what it does is it makes it so his HP attack also becomes an HP attack plus which does splash damage now Yang I'm not going to go over too much of Yang because quite honestly I mean first of all if there are anyone in the, my comments or anything that whose favorite character is Yang then please sound off because I can't think of anybody that cares about Yang all that much. But he doesn't, he's, just, he's still the same. He doesn't do an awful lot. He's a very, very dull, like compared to so many other characters, there's just nothing new that he brings to the table. So I'm just going to kind of skim over Yang and then move on to the next character. Now the next character that we're going to be looking at here is Raijin. Now much like Fujin, it's basically more of the same with him. Like if you look at his basic command abilities, they just, they're just nothing. He gets a Thunder Stance which just makes it so that his attacks are slightly stronger. Or if you have his gear, he inflicts Thunder Resistance down which actually is more relevant than you might think and I'll come to that in a second. But his passives increase his fist max uses by one. Um, if you also have his 15 CP, it also extends the buffs that he gives to his entire party, which is worth noting. And then Raijin special, but um, it just raises its total potency. It just makes it so it's slightly stronger. It can now overflow. But what it doesn't have is an HP attack attached to the end, which is really unfortunate. Um, but the thing to bear in mind with Raijin is that the resistance that he imperils is more relevant than Fujin's because of some of the characters he can interact with. Namely, Lightning, Beatrix, and to some extent even Seven. You know, you know, Thunder is quite a relevant element in this game, and if you wanted to awaken him, if you already had him, then I wouldn't hold that against you. I certainly wouldn't go chasing after Raijin, but you know, going after... Yeah, you know, just a 60-60 awakening. We've had so many high shards and everything now. You can awaken practically anybody you want to. So if you have the stuff for it, I mean, I actually did pull for Lightning EX and I got it, thank God. And, um, you know, I got some Arrigin stuff along the way. So I'm not just going to sell off his stuff. I'll awaken him. Who knows? It might be a quite a fun little team competition between him, Lightning and Beatrix. Though I will point out that Vincent also imperils lightning and fire and kind of just does a better job of it. So if you already have access to Vincent, there really is just no reason to go for like Raijin. So honestly, he is a character I'll probably just skim over, but I thought at least mentioning that he might have uses was at least something. Next on the list is going to be Lilith Set. Now Lilith Set is probably the strongest character on the Awakening badge outside of the EX characters because she was actually very good 
prior to actually getting her 60-60 Awakening. Even at level 50, she was good. But now that she has her level 60, she still has her Whirling Edge and Sensual Dance. Obviously, the bits underneath are JP only. But, um, and then her gear just makes it so that she gets extras out of all of her stuff and she gets extra debuffs. She buffs and debuffs at the same time. And that's a really powerful thing. I've used a little set since this banner has come out and I've been extremely impressed with how she performs. But the passives that she gets from her 55 and 60, it basically means that she gets extra bravery, she gets to get an HP attack plus and a bravery attack plus, which matters a great deal in the current meta because it extends the longevity of a character, especially if they don't have an EX available to them. And HP attack plus isn't all that amazing because all it does is heal her. It doesn't heal the rest of your characters like Ico does, for example. But Sensual Dance is so good that it doesn't really matter. You get, if you have her 35 CP weapon, you have, you know, the sap, you have the attack down, magic attack down, you're, you, you know, between her and Beatrix, for example, I know I talk about Beatrix a lot, but she is currently the most used character in the game. Between Saint Cloth and this, you're just not taking damage, and that's a really powerful thing. And then Whirling Edge Extend, it makes it so that the Bravery Attack Plus raises your party's bravery when she attacks and that is something that's very very noteworthy and very worthwhile so honestly of the batch of lightning's ex banner and if you're pulling for lightning ex then grabbing lila set along the way is a great bonus and if you don't happen to get lightning ex then if you get lila set at least you got something so now we come to the grand high bitch herself lightning and she does a very very interesting job lightning is weird for want of a better term. I pulled for Lightning because I'm a massive Lightning fanboy and I just love the character and I wanted a reason to buy the gorgeous Goddess of Etro outfit because while I'm not a while in this game I will buy the odd costume if I feel it's necessary. So going over what the EX attack does because it is wordy as hell and it takes it, it took me a few times reading it to understand it myself. So it's a one hit brave HP attack, followed by a two hit brave HP attack, followed by another two hit brave HP attack, which is noteworthy because it means that if you've got a large amount of bravery going into that attack, you're not leaking as much as you think you are because you burn the first bit quickly and then you get extra attacks. And because the Knight of Etro buff that you get from it raises your max bravery, it actually means you're leaking a lot less than you think you are. So going into using Army of One with a high bravery actually isn't a bad thing. It raises the bravery potency if a target is broken, restores own HP based on total HP damage dealt to up to 10% max HP. If the healing amount exceeds max HP, the excess is converted to bravery. It delays the target by a turn and it grants uh, Knight of Etro for three turns and it doesn't consume ability uses on the next turn. That's a lot. That is a hell of a lot. And the fact that it doesn't consume ability use on the next turn is extremely powerful. Like It gives lightning longevity like she's never had before. And then Knight of Etro itself, Thunder Enchanter, raises a max of an attack of bravery, and when the target is broken, it nullifies action delay and grants a free turn that does not increase the turn count. That last few words is huge for Lightning, because the biggest problem that she's had, and still has to some extent, is that she is what we call a selfish DPS. She doesn't play well with others. She just eats turns, eats turns, eats turns. You take her into a co-op, she's stealing turns and making her turn delay so short that no one else gets a word in edgeways. And that can be really bothersome, particularly when you're going for high scores on like EX stages or anything following. She does get a rework in Japan that makes this slightly easier and it makes it a bit better for her because her... The problem that she has is that she relies on her high turn count to deal a like, large amount of damage without her EX. So you're kind of having to just leak turns in order to deal the damage you would have just dealt with somebody else. And then if you have Ravager active, which comes from using Spark Strike, it basically turns Army of One into just a stronger version of itself that delays the target by two turns instead of one and does more bravery damage. It's just a slightly stronger version of itself. Now we actually had Lightning's 6060 Awakening quite a while ago, but it's worth having a quick look at it now and seeing what we get out of it. It makes it so that Spark Strike and Flourish of Steel can be used extra times, which is actually very strong in conjunction with her EX, because it, you know, that extra not using the ability count when on the following turn it means that the free turns you're not using up loads of your uses. It's it's actually like really strong. And she gets granted the effects that she gets from Ravager and Spark Strike last longer, so the only problem with her kit 
is basically that Spark Strike isn't an HP attack. If that, I mean, when she gets her rework in from the JP side later on, it does become one, and then all of her buffs get stronger, and she becomes really powerful. Although there are a lot of characters that become really powerful by that point. And she just needs a reason to use Spark Strike, or she needs a turn to use Spark Strike so that you're in Ravager mode to get Army of One Plus off, and you're not just leaking bravery all over the place. But like I said, because Army of One allows for brave leakage you know, within itself because it raises your max bravery and it leaks though it, it, it sort of bursts all of that bravery into that first attack and then gets extras it's not quite as bad as you think and then lastly with lightning zx we're just going to quickly look at what the limit bursts do to it uh, the first one slightly raises brave damage dealt with it um, the second one makes Knight of Etro last a little bit longer, which is important, although the recast rate of, of Army of One is so fast, you will not run out of, of Etro. I really wouldn't worry about it. And then the recast rate up, obviously, is the one we always have on the third limit break. So, do I think that Lightning EX is worth pulling for? Kinda. Like, if you like Lightning like I do, then absolutely. I absolutely adore the character, I love the Knight of Etro outfit, I think that o Overture has to be the weapon that goes alongside it, because look at it, it's beautiful, and I, uh, being a fanboy about it. But in terms of meta, not necessarily, you don't have to pull for it, you could save past it. There are characters coming in the next month or two, like Kuja, Quistis, Sephiroth, there's a lot of characters coming, Renoa, Golbez, who are all that much stronger than Lightning is. Yes, Lightning will get a rework later down the line that makes her, kind of puts her on par with everybody else, but she will fall off quicker than some of the other characters. So, if you're not a massive Lightning fanboy, or you're not particularly after Lilith then you could happily skip this banner. But, if you do happen to get Lightning EX, she is still very good. Now, on the other side of the banner, when it comes to the Spring Festival and the Final Awakening batch, is Bartz's banner. So we have Bartz EX on this, and it also comes with Yuffie, Saz, and Cypher. So let's have a look at those. So the first character I want to talk about on this banner is going to be Yuffie. Now, Yuffie was always a bit of a mean character up until this point, because she was awful. She was really, really terrible. But... Her passive abilities at 55 and 60 actually do her a lot of favours. She's by no means game-breaking in any way, shape or form, but she's certainly usable now. You know, Snatch is something that she uses in order to kind of like steal a buff in the same way that Volfia does, and it's not anything special really. But now it's a brave HP attack, and it's similar to Bart's missile, it lowers it lowers your opponent's bravery by a percentage when you use it. And it's, it's a, just a stronger attack that happens to have something similar to Balthea along the way. The I don't need this buff, however, actually does quite a lot. Because it it's obviously increases its max uses, because all of the, all, all the extends seem to do that. Um, but it also inflicts a large number of smaller debuffs before you get the kind of gimmicky play of Yuffie, where she redirects any debuffs she has onto her, onto her opponent. So at least, even if you don't have anything that's debuffing you, you can just do something that's getting four lots of debuffs, which is quite strong. And it raises your party's bravery when you use it. You also, if you also if you use this you, and you get the um, now it's perfect uh, status, you get a brave attack plus, which also raises your party's bravery. So this is just kind of useful. And the HP attack plus you get while now it's perfect is active means that she gets a lot more longevity, she gets the Brave Attack Plus, she gets the HP Attack Plus. It means that she's at least usable. And then when looking at her weapons quickly, um, you know, it basically makes it so that your debuff throwback affects all enemies. So realistically, you're going to need this if you're going to use Yuffie at all. But honestly, whenever I talk about any of my Should You Pull or Awaken videos, I kind of assume that you're going to be awakening this character, provided you have all of the available tools for them. Um, it improves the effects of now it's perfect and extends its duration to 8 turns. Now that's a really strong thing to note for her because it means that she gets that brave attack, she kind of becomes a brave battery, which is nice, and it, it becomes that a bit helpful, but you also need this weapon in order to get the brave attack plus to have it in the first place. I wouldn't pull for Yuffie, honestly, I still don't think she's great, but if you really like Yuffie, then at least she's usable now. Now Cypher here, actually a little bit of a dark horse on this banner, because he's actually a very, very overlooked character in this game. 
but he actually gets quite a lot from his awakening. The first thing to note is more of the kind of the passive buffs he gets, like moderately raises maze of max bravery and attack while an enemy is debuffed. So he kind of plays a bit like Tidus. However, the thing that Cypher has is that all of his attacks are AoE attacks, which can be really strong. So no mercy extend makes it so that it's more uses, raises its hits, all that j usual jazz. But it's now a brave HP attack, which when it's an AoE brave HP attack, that can be really strong. And then it also turns your HP attack into HP attack plus, which is also an AoE brave HP attack. So that's the first kind of thing we've seen where a brave HP attack becomes an AoE thing like that. So he could be really useful for farming. He could be really useful for uh, wave clears when before you get to a boss. That's actually quite nice. And then Bloodfest Extend raises its max uses by one, and Bravery Stolen can overflow, and then it adds de it adds debuffs or makes them stronger, and it also grants a special buff called Sorceress Knight, which increases your max bravery, attack, and debuff success rate. So the reason for the debuff uh, success rate is because with his 15 CP weapon, it has a medium probability of inflicting a small attack down for six turns, which doesn't sound like much, and it's not, but. It triggers a lot of other stuff that he has because his Brave Attack Plus that he gets from Blood Bloodfest also deals more damage if your opponents are debuffed. And a lot of things that he gets do more damage if your opponent are debuffed. So he plays a little bit like Tidus. He's not as strong as Tidus because the buffs that he the debuffs he provides just aren't quite as strong. He doesn't have quite the longevity. He doesn't have any X like Tidus currently. But I wouldn't be mad if you happen to get Cypher while pulling for Bartzi X. Now this will be a nice little flashback for everybody who's been playing the game for a while. Saz gets his awakening this time around. And while he's not quite the god emperor Saz he once was back in the 35 CP era, he actually does quite well out of his, uh, his level 60 awakening. I actually quite like using Saz. I did pull for him back in the 35 CP era, so I happened to have his stuff already, which is quite handy because the stuff you get out of him is not quite nice. Aim actually becomes a relevant attack at last, It's because uh, it was useless up until now, realistically. It re increases its max uses, increases its number of hits, tremendously raises its total potency, and most importantly, it triggers an HP attack after use. And the thing with Aim is that it can't miss, that's its main kind of draw. So the fact that you get a big ol' HP plus attack is really nice, and we already had an HP plus attack off of him from his 35 CP weapon even when he was level 50. So what does that now do at level 60? Grants the effects of attack boost to all party members, which is great because it used to only do it to two party members and it was just a bit of an awkward kerfuffle. Slightly raises the potency of attack up, it raises your party's bravery on use, and then it turns his brave attack into a brave attack plus for six turns. So basically his longevity, again, this is the main thing when it comes to these 60-60 awakenings, is that their longevity tends to go a lot, lot further. And Saz is not an exception. Saz actually gets quite a lot out of his 35 CP weapon anyway. So looking at it, for those of you who might not know, it increases the crit rate up, and attack up, and max bravery up. So that's actually every offensive buff you could ask for, and then it also buffs it to himself. So now you've got a double hitting aim, you've got a double hitting uh, HP attack plus, a harder hitting bravery attack plus, and all of them with a large crit rate, and you're giving that to your party members. He's probably not going to do as well as, say, Ico or Lilliset, but... He's still pretty good, all things considered. And then the last character that we're going to be talking about today is going to be Bartz. Now, Bartz has already had his EX weapon come out once already, so for those of you who aren't aware of what it is, it is a one-hit brave HP attack that raises max bravery attack and speed for five turns. Doesn't sound all that exciting, but when you look at the weapon itself, it also gets the Ayanuki um, Brave Up All, which means that it is a Brave Battery attack as well, and that's quite nice. So, he's. But the, the main thing to do with Ayanuki is that it's got a really fast recast rate, very similarly to Lightning, so you're going to be using it an awful lot. But, having a look at what he gets at 55 and 60 now, because the main draw of him is that he's had a rework. So what does that mean? It means that they've basically gone in and dove into what his abilities used to be and then played around with them and made them stronger so that he is that much more playable alongside the current meta. So if you happen to have his EX weapon already from the first time around he came in, you're, gonna, you're in for a treat. So what Double Hand Extend does, and again these become very wordy but I'll try and explain them as uh, concisely as I can, is the Master Requirement is shortened so you only have to use it once now in order to get the Mastery Plus. 
And then if you get use double hand, it grants better buffs. And then it double hand itself can get an HP attack when you uh, get to past 80% max bravery. You get brave overflow, which you didn't have before, and it turns his brave attack into brave attack plus, which also shaves your opponent's bravery by a percentage before the brave attack, and that also raises all allies' bravery based on your attack. So he becomes this massive brave battery out of nowhere that. Uh, Basically everything he does, Brave Shaves and buffs your party's bravery all at once, and then Missile Extend, it basically means that you don't have, your opponent doesn't have to have loads of bravery for you to use Missile anymore, because the whole point of it is that it reduced your opponent's bravery by a large percentage before doing the bravery attack and then breaking them. That's still relevant now, but now because it has a Brave Overflow um, effect, it can uh, give bravery to your entire party, it now triggers an HP attack after use, it's... Bart's has just become this massive brave battery that's really, really strong at this point in time. But like Lightning, he will fall off quite quickly. He's not going to stick around forever. He's good, but he's not broken. He's like he's very powerful, and if you have his EX, I'd be very happy about it. But don't rely on him for too long. There are better characters coming around the corner, and this is why, if you've ever seen any of my videos where I'm pulling on anything, or any of my streams where I'm playing as dead, you see the amount that I save up gems for, because I know what's coming, and I know what I'm waiting on. So, that being said, would I pull on Bart's banner? I'm personally not pulling on Bart's banner, because I already have Saz, like, maxed out. I don't have Bart's Noir Calibre, and I think that that's a very important thing when going into whether to pull for Bart's or not, because it raises your attack and speed of all allies after you master an ability. Now that you get that after one use, that's actually really important. So if you don't have Noir Calibre, then your Bart's is going to be strictly weaker than other people's. And that weapon hasn't come around very often, and it came about quite early on in the game's lifespan. So if that's that could be a factor as to whether you pull for Bart's EX. It certainly is for me, and because even though I have his 15 and 35 already, I won't be pulling for Bart's EX because I don't have that World of Illusions weapon. So in short, before we end this video, should you pull on this banner? Honestly, unless you're a massive fan of Lightning or Bart, you can skip this. It's not the end of the world if you don't. We have amazing support characters already, like yeah, there are some really good ones in this set. So you've got Lilliset, you have Saz, they're very very nice, Lilliset in particular. But we already have Ico, we have Selfie, we have Kate Sith, we have Deuce, we have so many really strong support characters, and these guys aren't much stronger than those, if stronger at all. So if you're not aiming for Lightning or Bart's EX, then no, I wouldn't pull on these banners at all. If you have everything for Lightning and you like the character like I do, then yeah, sink some tickets in, maybe do a couple of gem pulls. I certainly wouldn't go 75,000 gems deep for either of these characters. Unless you are a really big fan of those, these particular characters, then I would suggest skipping these banners and waiting until, at the very least, waiting until we know what's coming out in May. We should still have uh, the tail end of these banners coming about before the video comes out for May, hopefully. So we'll know a little bit more information as to where we can put our gems, what we can save for, and where things might want to be in a month's time. But I did pull for Lightning X because I love the character. I didn't pull for Bart's X because I didn't have his World of Illusions weapon. Otherwise, and even if I had, I probably still would have skipped Bart's because his longevity just isn't up to par with some of the other characters that are coming out in the future. But if you do happen to get either of them, then you should be happy about it. Uh, the only reason that I sit there and I say, oh, don't necessarily pull is because I'm extremely stingy with my gems because I try not to spend loads of money on this game. But... If you, if you like the characters, then there's nothing wrong with pulling for them either. So I wouldn't give this a 2 or a boot. It, it, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. This is a 50-50 banner. No, there's no judgment if you do pull on it, but it's quite happily and easy for you to skip as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video has helped you out with a little bit more kind of knowledge on what these characters do, why they're useful, how they're useful, and whether they're going to be worth pulling for in the future or not. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and all of that good stuff, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications for when my videos go live, and I'll be bringing you more Dissidia Opera Omnia content in the near future. So thank you very much again, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!